Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. A quick one, I apologize for being a bit lax on YouTube recently. There's been a few uh, days where I haven't really been posting. I usually try to post once a week. I don't know, recently that's been going woo, a bit off kilter. And the reason behind that is because I actually have just finished year three at UPJS. So I had all of my end of year exams kicking off. They've finished now, thank God, I've passed every single one of them. So I'm officially done with university and I'll be awaiting my year four entry, which is going to be kicking off next year. And I really can't wait for that. So I'll keep you updated with my uni journey as it goes along into year four, which will then see the beginning of my clinical journey at UPJS here in Slovakia. Now, today's video is more so about my experiences here for the first year, my full academic year here in UPJS and my kind of like thoughts on how it all went from start to finish, the highs and the lows, and a quick breakdown of what you could be expecting as well if you want to join the university. So let's get into it. First things first, when we arrived over in September, the process was relatively straightforward with the agency that we went through. So shout out to them for helping us out with that transfer process. Obviously we had the uh, transcripts from Ukraine and then Egypt tying that all together in an EU university like UPJS is not easy. So then they had to kind of do all the equivalences and give us the year group that we would be starting in, which was fortunately the third year and not anything lower than that because I've been at uni for far too long and I wouldn't have wanted to go back to the second or the first year, God forbid. I was quite happy that we got into the third year, smashed that out and that was a good start to the university career that we've had over here. Now getting into kind of how our weekly routine was spread out. I've kind of gone over this in previous videos as well. The winter semester was pretty easy. It was quite relaxed. We had our Slovak, which was the hardest thing to do. It's a compulsory subject for anybody who is transferring or starting fresh. You will have to learn the Slovak language, but the teachers here are great and they'll help you through that process so you won't really feel out of your depth. And they are quite helpful in terms of getting you through enough to kind of get through the exams and learn enough to, to use within your clinical uh, years here at the university as well, which is super helpful as a clinician moving forward, be that in medicine or dentistry. The rest of the subjects that we took on within the winter semester mainly consisted actually of fourth year subjects. Funnily enough, we were really only being held back by one subject, which is known as Propedeutics of Dental Medicine, part three and four which basically denotes that the first two parts uh, take place in year one of your dental studies, if you were to do dentistry here, with Propedeutics 3 and 4 taking part in year two. Now, unfortunately, because they didn't sign these off with our transcripts, it just meant that we were being held back by a year two subject. So it kind of stung. Uh, and in all honesty, the work that we did and the studies that we did for that subject reflected everything that we already knew from our previous university in Egypt. So. We almost felt like, I don't want to say it was a waste of time because it wasn't, but we almost did feel as though we were just doing the same thing over and over again. This can be a bit of a hindrance just simply because you feel as though you're not really going anywhere. Uh, so in terms of morale and motivation, it does kind of wear you thin a bit. You're doing the same stuff. You're working with the same phantom heads again. You're doing the same class ones, class twos, etc. And you just kind of feel like, come on, man, where's, where's that clinical work? But, you know, patience is a virtue. So we did get through that quite well uh, without any hiccups. In terms of the other subjects that we took from the second year and the first year, that's kind of it. Slovak and the propedeutics from the third year. Funnily enough, I don't think we had anything from the first from the third year. So being in the third year was kind of like no man's land. And I don't think we met anyone from the third year itself within any of our classes. So we're in like a really weird space. We're like, Third year students, I don't know any third years. And then we know like first years and second years because of Slovak and prop. And then we know no one in our year. And then from the fourth year, we know people because we took a lot of fourth year subjects because we had the free time to do so. What it basically means is that next year when we start fourth year, we're going to have quite an easy ride because we'll be doing the clinical subjects within fourth year, like uh, conservative dentistry, prosthodontics, etc. And there's a couple, of, couple more in there as well. But it just means that we don't really have to faff around with the medical subjects that you will get in the fourth year. The fortunate thing is once we get through that fourth year into the fifth year and the sixth year, it's massively, massively based around dentistry in itself. So you kind of have that steady journey into becoming more and more of a dentist as you go along. And from personal experience, I'd say that this year has been pretty easy just simply because the dentistry stuff that we've done, we've already done it before and all of the medical related subjects that were in the, gonna be in the fourth year that we've already done, 
we had time to study those because we didn't have much pressure from our dental subjects. So how has the uni been overall? Well, it's been great. The uh, teaching standards have been amazing. I've covered this in previous videos as well. So it just outlines that this is a pretty good university, definitely up to EU standards and UK standards. Um, the facilities that you'll get at the university are great. Uh, really allows you to study at the university if you want in the library. So loads of resources, loads of people that you can access and then speak to if you want any mentorships or if you want to learn more through your lecturers and your, your tutors. So there's no issue there whatsoever. The study department speaks entirely in English as well, which is really helpful for any student that's coming over that wants to start or just needs any breakdown as to what they might need to do. Uh, to fix their timetable or any study related issues. Again, the teachers do all speak English. You have no issue whatsoever with anybody and their language, which is not the case in Egypt. So I still get messages nowadays saying, you know, I want to go to Egypt and whatnot. That is something to bear in mind that the language barrier does exist in, the e in uh, a country like Egypt. Whereas here in the EU with Slovakia, all the doctors and all of the professors speak English at a very good standard. So you have no issue there whatsoever. Um, how has it been living here? Um, cost of living, I would say I've had to adjust. I would say I lived like a king in Egypt just simply because of the exchange rate. Uh, now coming to Slovakia, one, we use the euro here as a currency. And two, I just think the country in itself has quite infl inflated prices uh, and a way of living because we're living in the city. So if you speak to Slovak, uh, Slovakian people, they will tell you that, you know, outside of the city in the more rural areas, prices are a lot more akin to maybe what we used to, um, not so bad, so to speak, but here in the city prices are inflated and you will see that because you're in a, you're in a student center, essentially. So you'll pay for that, um, but it's manageable. It's not extortionate. Uh, you'll find ways around. You'll use more public transport. You'll do what I did and get a bicycle, for example, to get around. Um, you'll eat less out, so you won't be doing much in terms of restaurants and fancy eating. And you'll learn how to cook and you'll just go out and buy your uh, ingredients from local shops like Lidl and Tesco, etc. And just learn a new skill set, which is cooking. So all in all, I've been really happy with being flung into the deep end here and adjusting my style of living. And it's definitely helped me out to become a bit more frugal and a bit more smart with my money as well. So I thank the experience. And overall, it's been a very steady ride here. There's no hiccups. There's not anything that just pops out of the woodwork and you just think, oh, I wasn't planning for that. It's really well structured here. And I really do recommend this place again and again to people who are looking to study either medicine or dentistry or vet med for that matter, because there's a vet university down the road as well. They want to come abroad and pursue their careers and pursue their studies. This is a really, really good place to come and get involved with. So definitely give this a go. Uh, for me, I'd rate this really highly as my first year. I'd probably say it's the smoothest like year of university that I've had compared to the other two universities. Long may it continue, fourth year, fifth year and sixth year to go. And I'll obviously keep you guys close to me on the journey. So again, a lot of people are DMing me and they're messaging me about the uni and whatnot. Feel free to do that. More than happy to help. We're now getting closer to results coming out for A-levels, for example. I think we're in June now, so not results, so to speak, but guys are going to be having their exams and then results in August. So now you're probably thinking about universities and where to go. You've probably got your UCAS applications out there and, and you know, good luck. Hopefully that all works out for you, but you should always have a backup. I've spoken to people and said there's always a backup, you know, scenario and you should have that in your head. Uh, one of which should be studying abroad. When you're looking at studying abroad, Slovakia should be one of those things on your list. So if again, you have any questions or you want to reach out, do not feel shy. I'm more than happy to help. Love helping. Um, I think we should always give back to each other. Uh, it's a great way to, to build rapport, build a network. And this is something that's going to help us all out in the future. So try to uh, help each other out is, is kind of my motto. So feel free to DM me or get in touch with me via my calendar link, which I always leave below. If you want to spend some time on the phone to me or a Zoom call, by all means, you can do that. So once again, guys, thanks for tuning in. It's been a pleasure this year. Hopefully I'll continue the videos and we can do this journey as we go along. And I will hopefully see you guys on the next one. So take care. Bye bye.